Let's see who this is. Hey, Cindy. Oh, hey, Savannah. I was just going through my Pokedex and I realized I don't have any Nova Scotian Pokemon. Oh, geez, no worries at all. I'll get started on something and I'll trade it over to you here shortly. So today's video will be the beginning of the creation of a Nova Scotian Pokedex. Might as well start at the beginning with the starters. Right now the spring peepers, which are little tiny frogs, are all I can hear in the evenings and mornings. They are pretty loud, so I knew my grass starter would have to be based on one of these guys. They're classed as a small chorus frog because they sing and they chirp, and the chirping actually marks the beginning of spring. These guys are found in eastern Canada and eastern United States, and their singing makes me think that if they were a Pokemon, they would probably be singing sea shanties, being as we're in the Maritimes. And that's actually kind of adorable the more I think about it. And so I gave him a sailor hat, and maybe he can rank up as he evolves. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so, let's stretch him out a bit into a leopard frog. So I chose a leopard frog to base the second evolution off of, simply because from a design standpoint it's kind of a nice middle ground between a spring peeper and where I know I want this to go is based off of a bullfrog. And that's perfect for a sea shanty because this guy looks like a meaty, meaty, thick boy baritone who would fill out that chorus just perfectly. So there we have a Captain Bullfrog. So I think this is going to be my grass starter evolution line from a little baby soprano into a big beefy baritone. And they sing sea shanties as their main attack. Yes. So it only makes sense that I name them accordingly. Okay, so entry number one in the Nova Scotian Pokedex is going to be this little fella, a grass starter by the name of Sopranitoad. And yeah, as you can imagine, as I already said, his main attack is going to be Sing. And he sings the soprano part of the sea shanty chorus. Sopranitoad is found in woodsy areas around marshlands and the sort, and you will hear them sing in the evening time to mark dusk. Actual spring peepers are tan or brown in color, but I like vibrant colors and this guy is going to be a very vibrant spring green with glistening yellow highlights, blue kind of shadows. He looks like he's a very vibrant frog, but he's not a poisonous frog, if that makes sense. He's very friendly. He's an East Coaster. So as I said, I picked a leopard frog simply from a design standpoint, because it's a nice middle ground between the tiny spring peeper and the bullfrog-esque design that I'm heading towards. I also like that the leopard frog has all of these spots and patterns on it and being the middle evolution it's kind of like it's teenage years so it's kind of like he has acne or skin issues but he doesn't but I just amuse myself with that little fact so I hope you like that too. He's still a sailor, he hasn't ranked up too high yet, still swabbing decks and what have you and I've decided to call him Alto because he'll do the Alto role in the Sea Shanty Chorus. So on to the Mac Daddy design here. Evolution 3 of our grass starter is going to be based on a bullfrog, simply because it makes sense with the two that I've already created. So he's gonna be like the captain of the ship He's the big bass baritone, so his name is obviously going to be Baritoad. So we have Sopranitoad, Altoad, and Baritoad. And they sing, and they all work together to get the job done, because that's what the crew of a ship would do. No, 
know, Baritoad is going to keep some of those markings that he had in Stage 2 as Altoad, but they've kind of leveled out and they have more of a set pattern now. On to the fire starter. The problem with the fire starter was it's not particularly hot here, it's pretty mild. So I was like, what could I possibly do? Until I remembered this little guy here. He's a feisty little redhead that is not scared of me, my dogs, or anything. He's also usually pretty hungry and snacky. So he's going to be the basis for my fire starter. I also thought that since Nova Scotia means New Scotland, and there's a lot of folks around with Scottish ancestry, that I should give my little head nod to that. So this little redhead also plays bagpipes. So since my little squirrel friend on my deck is a pretty hungry ravenous little fella, I think that's going to be the idea behind this guy's evolution. When he's little, he's running around quickly, then as he evolves he eats more and more and he starts slowing down and growing and he doesn't pay as much attention to his bagpipes. He just kind of carries them around, but he's more interested in eating. By Evolution 3, he's actually eaten his bagpipes, and now he's more like a skunk, and when he sprays you, you hear terribly played bagpipe music. For anyone wondering, he's based on a red squirrel, which are the type of squirrels we have here in Nova Scotia. So this little guy has lovingly been named Charpip. Char as in he's a fire squirrel, and Pip as in he's a little Pip Squeak, just a little fella, and also Pip being short for pipe. It made sense to me, so this is what we're going with. Okay, so Evolution 2 is kind of his more gluttonous phase. He's way more interested in food than he is practicing his bagpipes anymore, so he's getting out of practice. We're going to call him Soot Pip, again Soot, because he's kind of burning out, as it were, on playing his bagpipes. And Pip, because he's still kind of little. He's kind of in that awkward in-between phase, I guess. Something else I'm also doing is making his teeth grow big, big buck teeth, kind of like a beaver, so a head nod to being Canadian, of course. So by evolution number three, he's going to have the biggest teeth yet. He's also going to be the biggest version of himself yet, seer horn. Now he waddles around on the ground more like a skunk. He can't run quite as fast, and because of that, he ended up eating his bagpipes, so now they're just a part of him, and he's so out of practice at this point that when he sprays you, like a skunk would spray you, you hear very bad bagpipe music. Just poorly played bagpipes. So what am I going to send to Savannah? Definitely a water Pokémon. Nova Scotia is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean. To see it, you're going to have to go to her channel. In her video, she starts a Pokedex of Pokemon from the state of Michigan. She is a phenomenal artist, and I'm sure you'll love her stuff, so head on over and check her out. Well, now that I have that all done, we'll send this off to Savannah, and we'll see what she has for me in return. Hey there, it's Savannah, and I will be trading over my Michigan grass starter. Here in the great cold state of Michigan, there are a lot of heckin' trees, and deer, and the state game mammal is the white-tailed deer, so with that, a mix of trees and elk inspirations, my grass starter was born. Introducing the first entry in the Michigan Pokedex, Fawn Flora. 
based on a fawn of a little white-tailed deer with an oak leaf for a tail since they both fan out so nicely. I also took art inspiration from Bambi because that's how I first learned how to draw deer, and I just love this little cutie. Its name is also like a reverse of flora and fauna, plant and animal life, and it's spelled like a baby deer kind of fawn. When we thought of this art trade, I knew immediately I wanted my grass starter to be a deer. Like, what else could I have done? They live in the forest, they're pretty abundant, and they're just so beautiful and majestic. I also knew I was going to be sending over my grass starter since there is, like, more trees than anything here. <laughs> it was a perfect fit and I am very happy with how this little guy turned out. Next we have the middle stage, Rokling whose name comes from rock, as in Rocky Mountain Elk and the addition of the rock typing, then oak of course because of its oak leaf tail and tree coloration, and then yearling, which is what a young slash adolescent deer and elk are called. I wanted to allude to the rock typing with the coloration of the hooves and growing antlers, looking like stone, and then the ears and nose kind of looking clay colored, but I guess that would be ground. Oh well. I also gave Rokling a kind of fun yet awkward hairstyle since these are the teenage years for Pokemon after all, but he is prancing around all confident because he's ready for mating season. Wink wink. I figured that both Fawn Flora and Rokling would use their vine whip attacks from these little s seed spots on their shoulders and razor leaf from their tails. Rokling would also use spore and powder moves from its bushy mane and rock type moves with its hooves and antlers. And finally, what we've all been waiting for, the Big Daddy himself, the final evolution, Oak Stonetius. And to be honest, this name was really hard to think of, since this big guy is based on a lot of things like the prehistoric Irish elk, Megaloceros giganteus, oak and willow trees, and I needed some kind of rock or stone naming convention in there as well. It was just a lot to try to fit into one name that wouldn't sound like a mouthful. So Oak, Stone, and the last part of Giganteus. Oak Stonetius. I also made a female variation that is just a bit smaller with smaller chest fur because elk and deer all have sexual dimorphism, which means the female looks much different, but I couldn't completely make her a doe and take away the antlers, so smaller will have to do. I love this big beautiful beast, and it's probably my favorite of all my starters, which is why I just had to trade it to Cindy, though if we were trading in the games I would keep mine and give her an egg. <laughs> So I said part of the design is based on willow trees, as you can kind of see by the hanging foliage, but it also just kind of looks like moss. I still really like it though, and I just love the little oak leaf bush tail. Ugh, I am just so proud of this design. So here is my full evolution line of my Michigan grass starter, Fawn Flora, Rokling, and Oak Stonetius. I hope you enjoy them, Cindy! Also here are the shiny and female forms. These guys are adorable! I would love to walk into a clearing in the woods and find these little guys. Wouldn't that be so cute? Not to mention they turn into this majestic beastie right here. I absolutely adore them. Thank you so much, Savannah, for doing this awesome collaboration with me. It was so much fun, and a big thank you to all of you for watching. Stay tuned for more fun with art.